from the depth instant tutorial hey, it's Jim Adesim. welcome back to instant tutorials subscribe today we're going to check out some cram with well that's basically crams that are meant for shooting down incoming shells other crams and missiles very handy it's a cheap way to do area of effect damage and it's great for taking out clusters of incoming projectiles this turret we have in front of us is a Cramwiz system I made earlier. This is a heavy-duty heavy Cramwiz that is meant to shoot down incoming big shells regularly and it deals a lot of damage. However, this time we're going to make a little smaller Cramwiz system that we can use to, uh, well, take out lighter clusters like medium missiles, um, not too heavy crams and uh, small missiles and stuff that comes in clusters basically a great addition to your uh, well point defense systems and great to combine with our earlier direct input fed um, closing weapon systems that you should definitely check out if you haven't seen it already as said these do more of an area of effect damage while uh, the uh, well for example the diff sieves we made before they are like sniping the actual shells and they need to be really accurate and these don't have to be exactly as accurate we're going to do a pretty low profile um, that's not too deep a 5x5 turret so not a deck gun but almost um, here you can see we've added some metal base we added the surge protector as well as a rubber insulation Inside of here, we will indeed have our, uh, well, not local weapon controller, but closing weapon system all in one sieves thing. Uh, for this build, it's a tad bit larger. So, what we can do is to go in here and make sure that the closing weapon system's priority is uh, pretty big. We can add a little local weapon controller here as well. So, it if it does work as an, um, well, damage dealing cannon in case there is no incoming shells to shoot down so we'll just have it there we're gonna make it switch targets if it can't uh, shoot properly and there we go pretty basic setup the most important thing for this is of course that it doesn't have a high priority here we can see the priority should be minimum while this one has a maximum priority, so it will definitely uh, fire instead. Inside the CWIS controller, we can already set up a, a little, um, well, main rule set. So we want to have a ignore outside angle of incidence. I like to take this a little bit lower. This will be uh, 40 in this case. It's not as important. Uh, then we're going to add some different types of rules. So we will do a ignore outside projectile diameter. So here we can see we have a range for small missiles and up to, uh, well, huge missiles. So here we can limit how big or how small you want to target yourself um, at. This will target small missiles as well. So we're just going to set this to 249 so that we basically target all types of missiles and crams. We will not have any uh, preference for that. Add another rule. We're gonna have a, uh, well, weight. Then we're going to have a uh, cluster size, the approximate number of detected projectiles within the 30 meter from the projectile. Very nice, so cluster size. Weight at range max will be maximum and range at minimum will be, well, minimum. So the lowest value is uh, 1 and the highest value is 20. So we will really want to shoot at where we have some clusters of stuff. We will add another rule and that is ignore outside. We're going to have uh, distance. So we don't want it to shoot at projectiles that closer than 80 meters because uh, we probably don't have time to deal with that and the turret will just move around and jerk around and it will not do anything good. And we will reliably not hit anything uh, further away than 1500 meters because crams are not the most accurate. And I think that uh, this rule set is good to have. Another thing that we could have is to have a weight 
and then we can have a number of sieves aiming. So if we don't want it all, if we don't want everything to aim at the same thing, uh, we can have this. But I think we want these to really focus at just killing clusters um, and uh, just having one of these cannon shooting one shell would probably not kill a cluster. So for this thing, I will not have number of sieves aiming. Uh, we did that in the diffgan tutorial uh, for well, diff sieves, so check that out if you want to. Great, that's very nice. So now we've set up some basic stuff there. To make it fit uh, in pretty shallow spaces, we will make it five blocks high, so we can have like one four meter wall plus a deck, and then we could have the turret. So it will be five blocks high, and over this limit, the turret will be uh, sticking out. So now we can just start building the cram system. Now you'll want to do some nice 3D cram Tetris. And while you're doing this 3D cram Tetris, and if you want help with 3D cram Tetris, please refer to other instant tutorials for that. But what you want to keep in mind during this entire process is that you want to only use high explosive pellets. Yep. Nothing more than high explosive pellets. Nothing advanced like that. Just, just high explosive pellets. Um, and you also, of course, want a couple of payload compactors, but try and focus at finding some efficient spaces for these high explosive pellets. All right, and here we have designed a little turret. And you can see I've done some 3D cram Tetris. We do a dual barrel setup because you always want to have dual uh, barrels or more barrels because that's more efficient. Uh, another video about that. In any case, these reload every 27 seconds. Um, so this means that it might actually be a good idea to not turn on the, this local um, weapon controller. Because if we shoot at the enemy and then we have to wait for 27 seconds before we can fire another volley again, um, it might not be ideal if we don't have... Uh, um, yeah. So we might need to remove that setting uh, to have a to have one of these local weapon controllers as uh, secondary. Uh, it's probably better to use if we have a more faster reloading gun. However, we'll try if we can make it work by having a bit delay between the uh, well cannons on this thing. So now we're going to set up this little barrel here. And we of course want it to be quite agile, so we need to avoid to use heavy barrels. So we added some more barrels for accuracy. Then we have a bunch of elevation barrels so that we can reach 75 degrees and some motor driven barrels or pivot bar barrels so that we can actually aim in the direction we want fairly quickly. Also, we can see that the explosive damage is uh, almost 15,000 per shot and uh, we have a 17.7 meter radius so we can take out some good clusters with this thing. Right, then we have synchronization. We're gonna set up to uh, same turret here or same cannon on the turret. So the minimum delay will be uh, 10. The maximum delay will be 15. Maximum wait time will be 20 because, well, we want them to be pretty spread out when they shoot. Now we're going to add the most important things on, these, uh, on this turret and that is fusing boxes. We need some good fuses for this thing. So we're going to see where we're going to place the fuses. We need to turn off symmetry plane. So one fuse can go there and the other one consequently can go there. In this fuse, we're going to have um, this thing time from launch. So we'll set up that time to explode. Set this to like 15 or something. Um, we'll just control C, go over to this fuse, control V, very nice. Now we're going to set up another little part here, which is important, which is the laser targeter. So we're going to have the laser targeter there and consequently the other one there. So they are on each cannon. So we have it offset and save the distance. We usually don't need to mess with that, but if you always shoot before or after the shells, you can adjust the values here. And this should basically be the main setup here. So we'll need to armor this up a little bit 
and of course having some uh, detectors on this turret as well. And there we go, on defense you got the munition warner, so we'll have one on here. So now we have a setup little turret here, and this should be able to shoot down incoming clusters and deal some damage to the targets in its spare time too. And there we go, save them so we can test them. Each one of these costs 5000 in materials. And there we go. So these indeed shoot too slow, so I removed the local weapon controller. You can also turn it off, dependent on the ship you're using. And as you can see, they are dealing some good flak damage to take on some volleys. Sometimes the shells have a little bit of a problem to actually get a shell away before uh, the well, shell hits us. And this is because they required accuracy before fire. We can actually decrease the accuracy a little bit here, so that it is instead uh, one degree, and it can help with that. And I also set up the synchronization here to be a little bit lower than it was before. And now we got a little nice cram system, which is quite good at shooting at incoming volleys of projectiles. So doing a quite nice area of effect damage. Uh, this entire little setup costs 50,000 materials um, and well, it's kind of cheap and it can be a really good extra system to have as your CWIS. Best combined with lamps and other systems of course. But here you could see it saved us from this volley here. So really valuable because the strongholds volley is pretty scary. In any case, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and uh, made you make some really nice <laughs> cram with systems to help you protect from incoming damage. These ended up being pretty heavy hitters. You might want to set them up so that they reload faster, but all different types have different uses. These are very good for some heavy duty clearing of incoming clusters. In any case, hope this little instant tutorial helped you and indeed check out the playlist with my other instant tutorials so that you can protect yourself and uh, build some really cool stuff. This is your host Jim Desmond. and we're signing out.